Hello everyone, it's been a little while since we've done one of these. A record of Ragnarok's leak discussion. Today we're going to be talking about the leaks for chapters 62 and 63. That's right, apparently we're getting another double chapter this month. And this one seems to be like an actual double chapter as opposed to last month, which was just one normal length chapter divided into two really short chapters that had no good reason to be split into two. I think the last time we did one of these was in December, and that was the last time I got a copyright strike. And that's part of the reason that I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, and the other reason was that I didn't really think any of the chapters were worth talking about the leaks. Uh, or, if there was stuff to talk about in them, there was just not a good translation to go off of. Whereas... This month is not the case. Um, the chapters seem fairly straightforward. We've got somewhat coherent translations of what's going on, and also it's fairly easy to understand what's happening, even without a translation. And these are actually good chapters. Thank fucking God. I can't believe it. Oh, right, of course, you know. Uh, doing a leaks discussion, I want to get a copyright strike, so we're not going to put any panels in here or anything. It's just going to be what Dio called... Was it Dio or Orion? Someone called it the, the Chin Rant Sona the other day, and I was like, you don't watch my fucking videos, do you? Um, so it's just, it's just going to be that. No images, so, you know, listen to this one, I guess. Um, yeah. So, this fight has not been that good thus far. It started off very strong, um, then just really started dragging. Uh, the chin focus was way too much, not really much happened in quite a few chapters, and then we got last month's chapters, which were just dog water. Just, just bad. It's bad chapters. But now it seems like we're back in business, because these chapters are pretty good. We get, from what I can tell, as far as I can understand this far from what we have, a pretty decent combat chapter and a backstory chapter, both of which finally, finally focus on Hades. That's right. I'm, I'm shocked. I can't believe it. We're actually back to having the standard good quality chapters from Ragnarok that give decent attention to both fighters. I I can't remember the last time I was this shocked by something. Maybe it was when I was shocked by how terrible the last chapters were. Or like, um, uh, I think probably when I like checked and saw that I suddenly had 20 patrons. Speaking of, how about I give a shout out to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Archbear cj 2 k Neo, Dijon Redden, K God, Chris Redfield, Rat, Ryzen 4K, Artist, Wave of Manga, Chuck's Feed and Seed, Jake Stereezy, Play Free Labs, Kanichi Kaneda, Strawbones, Neverest, Daniel Powell, Brandon Smith, Alex Latella, Abdullah Algaithi, and Charles C. Highland. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at some point during videos, or access to videos on the Patreon, such as early access to episodes of Elden Ring Lore Explained, or reactions for The Boxer and The One Piece, you can always become a patron as well. There's links to my Patreon down in the description. Now, as for the actual contents of this month's chapters, first off, Hades has an ability. I know. I can't believe it. You mean he doesn't just have physical stats and a magic weapon? That's crazy. I mean, that, that's, that's fucking ridiculous. How can that be? Well, it seems like Hades' magical power is his blood, which is called Pluto's treasure, treasure of Pluto, Pluto Icker, something of that nature. Um, as far as I can tell, it's basically just a physical stat boost, but he also used it to buff his weapon and transform it. So now it's kind of like a sword spear called Iker Desmos. Um, which looks pretty cool. Um, if he's able to use this for transforming his weapon, I'm hoping maybe he can use it to do other things. Listen, if he just uh, starts doing straight-up bloodbending, the Hades stocks will go way up. I mean, the Hades stocks are going back up this month for various reasons. Um, 
But if he can just do, like, fully-fledged bloodbending, um, like, making blood weapons and shit. Oh, that's, that is high tier. In terms of, like, quality. I don't know, it's not exactly high tier in terms of strength, but it's fucking cool. Um, well, apparently it's really strong, because he kind of wrecks Chin's shit this chapter. Uh, it seems like he pierces through Chin's arm and gouges out one of his eyes. You know how in rounds three through five, um, the author decided they really like limb loss, like having a limb severed is a very shocking, crippling injury. And then we got a crossover in round five where it's, oh, now eye loss, getting your eye gouged out or whatever. We had that in round five, the human fighter lost an eye. Then in round six, the human fighter lost an eye. And now in round seven, the human fighter has lost an eye again. And this is the second time it's happened through a powered up super strong piercing attack that gets a double page spread after the god fighter does a transformation i will give credit for this month's chapters but we're not that original it seems like we're just kind of rehashing a lot of things from the previous fights at this point bit unfortunate but you know the blood ability is a new thing so you gotta give credit for that where it's due the second chapter we get this month is primarily focused on Hades' backstory, which, as far as I can tell, doesn't include Persephone, which is a travesty. we got to dock some points for that. But it does do, as far as I can tell, a pretty good job fleshing out Hades' relationship with all three of his brothers, not just Poseidon. Hades equally loves all of his brothers, and that is showcased, and that makes it better a bit than him just having this fucking absurd obsession with Poseidon. Um, it seems like he even, in a way, almost encouraged Poseidon to be nice. Poseidon was nice to him. I really need the explanations for that, because this seems like a bit of retconning with Poseidon's character, and, you know, whatever. Um, it's mostly Hades' focus. Explains why he's the way he is. Um, and... I do like the idea of Hades being the Greek god, the member of the three brothers of Olympus, though technically four brothers, though now it is just three, um, who is the most loving and compassionate. I like that idea because that's kind of the deal with Hades in mythology in regards to Persephone, that the guy actually loves his wife and has a semi-healthy relationship with her, and it's cool that he has that with his siblings. We also get to see some other really cool shit, like young Zeus doing his thing. Uh, the Gigantomachy, which was the war against the giants after Kronos was defeated and the Olympians took over. We see the design for Gaia, who looks like a fucking eldritch entity or something, which is really cool because the whole idea is that she's one of the primordial gods. I think this is the first reference we've gotten to them. She's got like biblical angels and shit fighting for her. It's really cool. I'm glad that we're, you know, getting to see some of these parts of the uh, world of Record of Ragnarok. Uh, because, you know, having a world in which all the mythologies exist simultaneously has the potential to either be really good and interesting or just an absolute clusterfuck. And generally, Ragnarok is more the former. Uh, and we get some more of that this chapter. Also, apparently Adamus has been, like, operating in the underworld, but under a different name, like Adamantum or something. I think that's, like, the actual Greek god that some people thought Adamus may have been based off of, so that's actually pretty cool. Also, Adamus reveals himself to Ares and Hades, or not Hades, Hermes this chapter. Um, and Hades knows that both Zeus and Adamus are watching him, so, you know. That's pretty cool. I don't know if we see Adamus interact with Zeus. I think only in the leaks that I've seen, like, current Cyber Adamus uh, interacting with Ares and Hermes. I don't think we see him meet up with Zeus. Um, maybe we do. I don't know. I haven't seen him. Um, but anyway, cool chapters. I'm glad we're back to getting good Ragnarok chapters. Like, like, really glad. <laughs> After all, this is the series that I started the channel to cover. And I'm a big fan of Ragnarok in general. It seems like whatever the fuck was going on for last month, at least, we're finally over. Hopefully. 
uh, we keep up this quality. This isn't going to make up for, like, the last month. Um, you know, the, the fight did go downhill quite a bit. Maybe when we read it again as a completed fight, I'll like that. Or I still don't think I'm going to like those last two chapters. Um, but it'll be more co coherent. Uh, I feel like these chapters, and hopefully the chapters we'll be getting after them, will keep this fight from being bottom tier. Uh, so yeah, uh, obviously there will be a fully-fledged review for both of these chapters. I think both of them are long enough and have enough content to have their own individual reviews whenever they get translated. So look forward to that, and uh, subscribe so you don't miss them when they come out. So yeah... That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed discussing Record of Ragnarok with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.